Hello and welcome to Word Nerd Wednesday. Today, um, we are actually doing Slave, which is great because I've been talking about it for over, I think, two months, saying that I was going to talk about it, but then I got inspired to do the word God. And, you know, I go with the universe. I don't, you know, I go in the universe's time, which is perfect because right now the word slave is super appropriate as there is a apparently enslavement auction in Libya. Not apparently, there is definitely a enslavement auction in Libya. I just said apparently because I'm gonna use the word enslavement as often as possible, as opposed to the word slave. Now, why is that though? So slave, noun, came into English late 13th century and uh, basically still to this day means person who is the chattel or property of another. It comes from Old French, esclave, 13th century, from medieval Latin, sclavus, um, which meant slave again. Also in Italian, schiavo, French, esclave, as I said before, and Spanish, esclavo. Originally, slav, without the E, S-L-A-V, and we must follow slav, right? But right before we go to slav, it says, so used in the secondary sense, meaning why is it, why did the E? Why the E instead of just S-L-A-V? So it's used in the secondary sense, slave, because of the many Slavs sold into slavery, which is like, I mean, chicken and egg, right? If they were the ones who made up the word slave, then how could they be, so, you know, anyway, by conquering peoples. So let's see who these Slavs were and why the hell they got such a bad deal. Slav is a noun. Uh, came into English after slave, strangely enough. Late 14th century, sclave, from medieval Latin, sclavus, circa 18, 800, circa 800. This is one of the older words that we're dealing with in Latin that I even have a date. Um, from Byzantine Greek, sclavos, which is from circa 580. From old church Slavonic, y'all, old church Slavonic, I've been talking to you about this for like two words, and finally, we, the chickens, have come home to roost, okay? So from old church Slavonic, Sloveninu, which meant a Slav, probably related to Slavo, which meant word speech, which suggests that the name originally identified a member of a speech community. Oh, so those who spoke the words of the Slavs. I presume, um, identified a member of a speech community, compared Old Church Slavonic, Nemesi, which meant Germans, related to Nemu, which meant dumb. Uh, from Greek, hetero, heterophonus, heterophonus, foreign, uh, literally of different voice. Interesting. So all these of different voice. And Old English, piode, or piode, piode, pod, piode. Um, which meant both race and language. Whoa, that is crazy that they delivered that much information in those last few words. So we're going to have to go through that again because I need to process it. So slave comes from Slav. Slav meaning referring to the Slav people, but so many of them were enslaved by conquering peoples that their name, the name of their people, became to mean slave. But then when we go to Slav, and what that means, then we're dealing Sklav, medieval Latin, Sklavos, Byzantine Greek, Sklavos, from Old Church Slavonic, Sloveninu, a Slav. Probably related to Slavo, word speech. So presumably it was a combination of Slav, people who speak in this way, which suggests the name originally identified a member of a speech community, because, and they said compare this. So the old church Slavonic people, the Slavs, the Slav speakers who made this language, old church Slavonic, used to call Germans nemesi, which is interesting if we're talking about nemesis and how that came, but for a later word nerd Wednesday. So nemesi, which meant Germans because it was related to nemu dumb. So presumably the dumb ones is how that came about, which is an insult and definitely not a kind way to refer to anybody. Then that though, was related to Greek, and I don't know. Oh, it says, okay, so we're comparing in various languages how Slav came across and how we compare it in the translations of other languages in a comparable way to be like, this is how we got from slave to Slav, or Slav, Slav to slave. So also in Greek, there was a word heterophonus, which meant foreign, literally of different voice. 
and Old English piote, which meant both race and language. I can't even get into the Old English thing right now because that's so fascinating, but I got to do more research on that because that is taking us down a whole other road where they have a word that meant both race and language. P-E-O-D-E. I feel like there's a weird a word in scientific use that still is very much related to that word that is in actual use. So basically, Slav referred to people who spoke with a particular, I guess, accent, who came from a particular clan, who were a particular tribe of people that were recognizable by the manner in which they spoke. So then they became to be called they came to be called Slavs. These Slavic people who created the word the language Old Church Slavonic then were conquered by so many different kinds of people, evidently, at least, hi, hi. <laughs> at least uh, they encountered Latin, Latin people, or Romans, and at least they encountered these Byzantine Greeks, because, I mean, let's be honest, Rome was enslaving everybody they could literally get their hands on, um, and got us all the way to slave. So this is a very interesting, oh, I, I canceled that word. This is a curious thing. Curious is actually even better. This is a curious thing because it's a misnomer, right? Like no one can actually be enslaved anymore because if slave came from Slav, which meant these Slavic people who spoke Old Church Slavonic, then everyone who could be enslaved is dead. So there's no such thing as a slave. I already stated this. Now, etymologically, in terms of what slave came from, there's no such thing as a slave because there are no more Slavs in the sense of the Slavs who were being so conquered, so imprisoned that they came to be the general term for what happens when people get conquered. So all those Slavs are dead. There are people who are Slavic now, but they are not the people who were so enslaved that they became the word slave. And I think the misnomer is interesting because it speaks truly in the sense that I understand to how language can manipulate people into thinking that simply because a word exists, it's the truth or it's still relevant or it has meaning in modern usage. And certainly the using of words, no matter how old they are, no matter where they come from, over and over again, keeps them in usage. But their relevance, their importance, their significance may become stronger or pale over time simply because of the fact uh, that people forget their meaning, then the meaning comes back, or maybe it becomes more relevant at a time because of what's going on, what's happening in the world. But it makes me think about how, why it's important to say that there's a difference between enslavement and slavery, right? Because the concept of slavery is based on the idea and the philosophy and the truth that any person can actually be a slave. A slave meaning someone who is chattel or the property of another. Now, people can be enslaved, meaning they can be made to be as chattel or made to be as the property of another, but whether in the truthiest truthiness of the sense of the term, can someone actually be chattel? Can someone actually be the property of another in the truest sense of the universe, meaning their entire meaning and their entire purpose in life is this thing? No, it's an idea imposed upon them. So they live within this idea. The idea being enslavement is a true thing. Well, no, the idea being slavery, the true thing being enslavement. So this person can give the impression or come across to other people as a slave because to certain people, they think it is possible for people to be chattel or people to be property. But in the truest sense of the universe, is that actually the case? Like, can you actually universally, unequivocally, truthfully ever be chattel or ever be the property of another? Well... Obviously, my answer is no, but we actually have to think about that. Well, one, I mean, I, I had to pause there because I, then I was like, well, then I got to talk about what the fuck property means. Um, and we will do that at another time. But the point that I'm making here is more about the fact that language is so archaic 
so much of it has been formulated before those of us who use it now have arrived that much like anything, any belief, any faith system that has been around longer than perceivable memory, um, this is most things, but particularly religion or science, can be taken as fact, as, as unarguably the case of things. However, each of these things is a manner of observing the world. Language is a form of observing the world. Science is a form of observing the world. Religion is a form of observing the world. And I said this in the God video of Word Nerd Wednesday last, last segment. But the point being that like, even words are made up. Oh, and not even, every word is made up. There is no, there is no great book of, of things to think and say that our ancestors read and then just passed down through the ages. Everything came about as a, process of thought then communicated into some sort of form of mutual understanding. So just because the word slave exists in language doesn't mean it's a real thing. Just like the word muggle exists in English language, but it's a word from Harry Potter. So in the great book of lies, let's say in the chapter on slavery, Slavery is an idea that never could be a true thing, but it lives on in colloquial use. It lives on in concept. It lives on in ideas so that people then believe that because there's a word saying called slaves, that such people must exist. Whereas that's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, there's a word called witch. Some people don't think we exist, but we do. We do exist. But some people think we don't. So just because the word slave exists and it's available for your usage does not mean that it has any actual relevance in the observation of the world or that it has a strong or truthful relevance because the way that you conceptualize something the way you conceive of something is the way that you approach it that your understanding of something completely facilitates your relationship with that thing so if humans believe that other humans can be slaves they can continue to conceive and create different dimensions and elements of slavery. But if human beings understand that people can only be enslaved because we have an idea of slavery, then they can start talking about the mechanics of how people have decided that other people can be slaves. But if we just accept the word slave and accept the word slavery as a given, as a true thing, then there's no questioning involved. There's no inquiry involved. Then it becomes this behemoth, this solid thing, this thing that can't be changed and obviously it can be changed because it was created anything that can be created can be changed destroyed in some sense can be turned into something else um and in this case i think it should be turned into a greater form of knowledge nothing can be negative if it's used for a positive end in the sense that as long as the future result of that negative thing brings about positive outcomes then it can be transformed into something greater. So I understand why the word slave exists. I understand that there were apparently at one time a people who were so conquered so often that people decided to call conquered people of that people's name. And I also understand that all those people are dead. So if there ever was a slave Slav, they're all gone now. And so the idea of what's going on in Libya is not a conversation about slavery, but a conversation about enslavement. It's a conversation about the choices we make to continue to put people in positions that no reasonable human being would wanna be in themselves. And then when we have to go from there, we have to talk about the ideas that people have that suggest that certain people are deserving or worthy or allowed to be treated in a way that you would never wanna be treated yourself. And then we have to start talking about heavy ass motherfucking topics as if this one wasn't one, but then we start talking about racism. Then we start talking about sexism. Then we start talking about homophobia. Then we start talking about, start talking about xenophobia. Then we have to start talking about all the phobia-isms ad infinitum until we get to the very heart of why people conceive and use language in the way that they do. Now, we won't be doing this the next segment, but eventually we will have to get into race and racism. And I'm still pretty interested in this old English word peyote or peyote, which meant both race 
and language. I think uh, that's all that I've got to say, except for the fact that you can never be a slave, you should never be enslaved, and if you were involved in either of those things, the question shouldn't be whether you are an enslaver or whether you are enslaved, whether you are a slave or whether you are a slave owner, but about why we accept these concepts as things that actually need to be lived out or accepted or possible because they're choices that we're making. There's no book, despite what many different different belief systems say. There is no quintessential, all telling, all knowing, all being, all existing book that any human has ever received that says these are the rules of the universe. We are 100% making this shit up outside of the necessities called air, water, shelter, slash heat, gravity. I mean, there are very few things that are true, true across the board for everyone. I'm ranting, or at least on a tangent now. So I'm going to wrap this up. That is Slave slash Slav. That is Ordinary Wednesday, number 14.